Right. I think we're live. Right. It's lovely to be in the, doing another live with you, Jolene. I think we're going to have fun today. Um, talking about topics that we double in every single day. Yeah. So I think it's going to be really fun to share some of that knowledge with everyone. Um, so we'll give everyone a few minutes to jump into the call, um, into the live, and um, we'll get started. Um, if you're jumping on, um, be sure to type where you're from and let us know, um, yeah, take part in the chat. If we're talking on a topic, feel free to chat, yeah, ask your questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to get started, you can just say where you're from, um, which school you're from, and what you're hoping to learn from the webinar in the chat. Um, Okay, so um, today we're going to be talking about programmatic advertising. So programmatic advertising is, there's very little that's known about it in the general space. I mean, every agency is well-versed in programmatic advertising and we offer it, we'll bring it onto the table and discuss the possibility of a campaign with our clients when we see that perfect fit for our clients. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it helps for the client to be aware of what the options are outside of having a conversation with us. And so that's what the idea was for, for this webinar. Mm. Um, so, yeah, let me introduce Jolene. Jolene is our account manager here at Roberts Digital. She works with all of our clients to um, kind of recommend the best campaign and fit and layouts and schedules for campaigns. And so I think you're the perfect person to speak into our programmatic advertising yep. topic today. Great. Nice to be here again. Thanks, Mara. Yeah, so we have, let me just see on my eyes, or let me just zoom in there. Oh, Oakley Grandma, hi. Um, she, she wants to learn about targeted digital advertising other than social. Well, perfect. I think it's, I think, it, um, I mean, we love social. Yep. Um, and it really is, you know, if you're going to go for a platform with the lowest click, you know, cost per click. Yeah. Um, you know, social and Google are great starts. Yeah. But we have a few clients that want to up their digital marketing that next level or yep. they have a very specific target that they want to achieve or objective that they want to achieve or yep. target market they want to reach. And we'll be talking about programmatic advertising with them. Um, David Garden, hello, lovely to um, have you with us. Um, so I don't know much about programmatic advertising, so I'm hoping to learn heaps. Great. And I think, um, yeah, coming with an open book yep. to take notes is always a good thing. And then Nicole, hey, Nicole, um, from CEN, and she's also always wanting to learn about something new. Great. Happy to have you. Lovely. So yeah, let's maybe just jump straight in, Mara, and you can dive into what programmatic advertising is. Yeah. So um, there's a few points to separate programmatic advertising from other platforms. So one, it's automatic, automated bidding and buying. And so when you load a web page, that bidding process is actually happening within milliseconds before the page is even loaded. Yeah which is just amazing. And the amount of data that feeds into that bidding process is just astounding as well. Yeah. So I always find it fascinating how that works. Um, you know, and we're always trying to get our load speed of our websites down to, you know, two seconds. Well, yeah. within that two seconds, there's a lot happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's automated method of buying and selling digital ad space in real time. Um, and so there's a few things there that make it a, a real benefit for um, for you to use. And it's an auction-based um, process. So it really depends on your bid, your ad quality, how your ads are performing to, to judge how, um, you know, how many bids you're going to win. Yeah. Uh, the next thing it is, is it's data-driven targeting. Yeah. Um, so programmatic advertisers um, uses a huge amount of data, um, including demographics, um, browser behavior, location, um, to deliver highly targeted ads to the right audience yeah. at the right time, which is essentially what we're always looking to do. We always want to be saying the right thing the right at the right time. audience at the right time. Um, and so this allows you to really tailor your message to your audience um, for, for more effectiveness. Um, the next thing that I mentioned, I've already mentioned it before, is real-time bidding. Um, so it's happening in real time and advertisers bid for ad impressions in real time. Auctions, which takes, as I said, milliseconds as your page is loading, mm. that's the bidding process is happening in the background in real time. 
which gives you a lot of nice data to work with. Um, and then the next thing that programmatic advertising is, is it's not platform specific. It's, yeah. you know, platform agnostic. It can be on, um, you know, besides the main platforms that we would go to individually, like meta ads and Google ads, it's on what we would call the open web. So these are other all the other websites on the internet um, that offer advertising space. Um, it's um, all those video platforms, native platforms, content, you name it. Um, that's, yeah, the um, the platforms that are available. And it can also be connected TV and billboards, which is so, so beautiful to be yeah. able to have a campaign across all of those um, platforms. And then it's also uh, a platform that um, is highly leans towards optimizing your campaigns and learning from insights. And so programmatic um, advertising platforms provide a lot of data to us yep. on how your ads are performing, if you're winning those bids, if you're not winning those bids, we look into why not. And that's what keeps our team so busy. Like we are in the process of buying ads for our clients and we're adjusting and tweaking campaigns day to day so that they can win more bids on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's not just kind of sticking your ad on a billboard and hoping for the best 20 grand later. Yeah. Um, it's actually adjusting it if it's not working. Yeah. So Leanne, hi Leanne from MacArthur Anglican School. Um, just there to learn. Great. Lovely to have you. I don't think I've seen you before um, on one of our calls, on one of our trainings. Amazing. So, yeah, I think that was a great summary of, of what it is. Um, and maybe you can dive into some of the benefits and what's, what those benefits are. Yeah. So the, the biggest benefit of programmatic advertising is the cross-channel reach. Um, you can really focus on the target audience you want to uh, reach. Yeah. And lay aside your worries about like abiding to like platform specific ratios that we normally need. Um, you know, for, say, for example, when we are putting together meta campaigns for our clients, we're always talking to them about broadening the audience so yeah. that meta has enough data to feed through the campaigns. And we use pixel based targeting for that. <clears throat> but this you can really say, I want to meet this person wherever they are at, whether it be um, native within content, whether it be video content that you're sharing, digital billboards, um, like geographic spaces, you know, yeah. you don't have to worry about um, the, the, you know, getting an audience size big enough. Um, the next uh, benefit is the optimization and insights. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, uh, back in the day, I used to spend thousands of dollars on cinema ads and things like that. And you kind of just say, you know, sometimes it was hit and miss. But you only know after you've spent the money and you don't get a report on, you know, who viewed the ad, what are the demographics, who clicked, who was interested, who closed their eyes or went out to the, for a loo break. <laughs> yeah. Get any of that data. Um, and so that makes this a massive um, win for the platform. It's not static. It's not stale. It's giving you real time and you can day by day adjust your campaigns. Yeah. Um, the next benefit is the targeting, which I know you're going to do a nice deep dive into. Um, but the targeting is really so rich. I don't think... Um, people really understand how um, diverse the targeting is until they really get into the platform yeah. and get stuck into researching different audiences. And what we've seen mm. is just amazing, we, you know, yeah. Um, so um, so you can reach people according to, like, their demographics, their browsing behavior, their location, um, and then you can, yeah, you can, and you can use all of that data to target those audiences. And yeah, the beauty of that is that it also mixes with having the right placement. Yeah. So for example, someone could be researching, um, you know, something for their child, maybe, you know, something to do with ADHD or special needs. Mm. Well, within that article, contextual placement you can have your ad for your special school or your offering to special students. Yeah. And just that's just so beautiful. That you really so can't yeah, yeah. ask for more. Um, and then the real time bidding, that really is a benefit because you get to learn in real time. Yeah. Um, you letting you you finding out whether you are winning the bids or not. Yeah. 
And if you're not winning the bids, the data is going to tell you the story of why it's not working and you can make adjustments as you go. Yep. That's a huge benefit. Um, and then the last benefit I threw in here because – um, it is really applicable to a few of our, our clients. Um, we have a few Christian schools or religious schools. Um, and we, um, so programmatic advertising isn't conf- as confined to, um, you know, what you can and ca- cannot say on the platform as, for example, Meta and Facebook are. Mm. And so, you know, as an agency, we've always worked around that and advised our clients what they can and cannot say in their ads. Yeah. But um, if you want to have a little bit more fun with your campaigns or if you want to be a bit more specific about your offering, programmatic ads aren't nearly as strict in terms of the content that you can share. And so that's a great benefit if you have mm. a specific campaign in mind. Yep, amazing. So, so Jolene, well, having said all of that, yep. what have you seen um, in terms of the targeting options? I know you're, you're often having chats with our clients on yep. how they can reach specific audiences on these different platforms. Yeah, What's available to us in terms of targeting? Yeah, and I think exactly as you say, I think these are often um, one-to-one conversations we have on a daily basis with our clients. It depends on the campaign's objectives or the goals or whatever we're trying to reach. Um, and programmatic advertising really offers a wide range of targeting options yeah. um, and this really allows us to reach the right audience with with the ads that we're placing so um, obviously these can vary depending on the platform mm-hmm. um, but I'll just go through some that are available so you have got your standard ones as you've mentioned yeah. now so you've got your demographics um, obviously we can target based on age gender income even education so we can really yeah. filter down quite um, quite intensely just to see um, what demographics are available Um, We've got the geographic targeting. So this could be based on two different options. Um, We've got um, targeting users based on their geographic location, but we've also got geofencing where we can define a virtual uh, perimeter. So we can target users based on a specific location and draw a radius around that specific location. Um, behavioral targeting, which is also a great one. Um, this can really target users based on their previous online behavior. So um, what websites they visited, what pages they viewed, um, their purchase history, their search intent. Um, we can really just narrow down what they're in the market for, what they're yeah. currently researching, what they're looking at. And um, so that is a great one because you can really find people in the process yeah. of where they're at in their user journey whatever they are researching yeah <clears throat> we've also got then um contextual uh, targeting so this is based on content relevance so targeting ads based on context of the content being viewed yeah. so this is where keywords or topics come in so we can really look at um an example here maybe would be a, a user or a parent searching for scholarship opportunities um at schools and we can target specific keywords to drive results That's um, right. yeah so it's a great one yeah, yeah. and, you, and you you can literally, um, you know, base it targeting off specific keywords yep. if you want to get broader with your, your targeting. Yeah. And you can yep. actually use keywords to target people. Yep. So, Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And meet people yep, where they're at. Yeah. Which is really great. Um, we've got remarketing. And this is um, great because you really want to be using this within your um, within your audience, within your targeting options so that you can um, reach people who have previously interacted with your website or your app, um, or whatever that may be. Um, and then another one is your lookalike or similar audiences. So um, we can look at reaching audiences that are similar to your existing customer database um, and we can identify common characteristics so that yeah. is a great one and lastly I would probably mention is the first party data where we can yeah. um, upload your customer data um, for targeting purposes and really again just reach reach those people yeah. out there yeah, yeah. So. I think it's when you combine all of those layers, you can yep. get really specific yep. and, um, yeah, and then when you combine that with a really good creative that's yep. really focused in on that audience, definitely, your campaigns yeah. can be super powerful. Amazing, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, it would be great for you, Mari, if you can dive into the platforms and the placements that are available. Yeah, so um, in terms of understanding, okay, where are programmatic ads actually shown? 
Um, there's a few options there. So um, native um, advertising, which is like in the content. So say, for example, if you're reading a blog post about ADHD in children and how to manage your child, you can have um, your ad sharp within the content of um, of that blog post or article or yeah, content. And so that's called native placements. Um, you then get display placements, which I'm pretty sure most would be aware of. It's yeah. the same as Google Display, except it's on the open web, and it may include some Google assets, but it's broader than just Google assets. Um, it's yeah, it's the open web, and um, often um, our clients will come to us and say, "Oh, I really want to target these sites," um, and then if they they've looked in Google and they see it's not available, well, an option is to go and look at the programmatic yeah. um, platform which are actually a few to see what's available for those websites um and you can actually even broker directly the, the yeah. um yeah deals as well uh, the next placement would be video so this can be either natively placed so a video within con- like showing within the content mm-hmm. like within a blog post yeah. or it can be in stream so uh, wherever people are playing videos and content um you can have your your ads showing in stream either the first few seconds or in the middle or the end depending on what your setup is um and then the next one which a lot of uh, which i feel is actually un- un- underutilized by schools which is connected tv so digital tv um, it can be super localized and layer on top of that it can be targeting people with specific behaviors and interests Mm -hmm. which i just i think is so powerful um and so yeah so ads on digital tv and as i mentioned you can lay it with geographic or behavioral targeting um and i'll just have an extra note here if I had my ten thousand dollars back from <laughs> when I made a bad cinema ad choices back in the day, if I could have that money back, I would, you know, rather than doing a cinema ad, I would one hundred percent do Connect TV instead. Yes. Um, go, you know, super local, super targeted. Um, you know, and your videos can be used across multiple channels, mm. you know, and reused. And so, why not have one of them or Connected TV? Yeah. The beautiful thing about connected TV as well is that there's not that high production value that's needed. You know, sometimes we think, you know, I know I've been involved in a few cinema ads and more higher production value um, productions and it's hard work and it's expensive. Um, With connected TV, you can, there's more of a local feel to the ads, if you know what I'm saying. So you can have a little bit of fun with that. Um, And then audio advertising. This is so... Um, you have the person's undivided attention often with audio or they're listening to a podcast while they're mm. gymming or um, they, they you know, they're engaged in the content. They're normally, you know, very highly invested in listening to the, their podcasts. And so audio ads are really easy to produce, um, you know, in, in, you, it's as simple as writing a, a script and having a voiceover um, do the ad for you. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it can be very effective. And so this can be like audio books, podcasts, and streaming playlists, things like that. Amazing. Um, the next one would be in-game and in-app. Use carefully depending on who our clients yeah. are. Um, and don't forget to target specific app users as we've done in the schools segment. Um, and then the next opportunity is digital out of home. So billboards, um, digital billboards. This is a massive opportunity. Mm. The way that you can link your billboard placements, I mean, not all the targeting options are going to be available, but um, there is there is actually a lot of targeting layers that you can add to your billboard ads. Yeah. You can go hyper-local, uh, plan out a campaign, and it can be live tomorrow. Yeah. Um, that's how quick it is. I um, mean, you plan out your campaign, it gives you the different ad, you know, billboard dimensions that you need. Um, you bid in, um, you know, you bid for those placements and um, you can adjust your campaign yeah. day by day. Yep. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, great. So I think um, something that we'd all be keen to hear is recommendations on ad spend. Yeah. So what are we talking there? Yeah, I think um, I totally, I, I come from about, I've had all sorts of marketing budgets to work with. Yeah. Um, 
and I know that we're, we're always looking to use our money well. Yeah. Um, so, but having said that, we do have some clients that come and say, oh, you know, what can you do for an extra thousand dollars? Yeah. Um, probably not programmatic and there's something else you could do. Um, so I would, as a rough guide, I would say if you have an extra five to ten thousand dollars in your marketing budget, um, especially when you're looking at maybe cutting some more of those static placements like magazine ads that aren't working anymore or um, traditional billboards or um, yeah, cinema ads, for example, and relocating, reallocating those sources to maybe programmatic, I'd say I can make campaign, yeah, around five to $10,000 for yep. a campaign. So there's a few things that we consider when looking at the budget often when we do a campaign plan we'll recommend a budget um doesn't mean that the client has to yep. use that but it just means that we've looked at you know how much volume we're expecting and what the expected click-through rate and conversion rate is we've looked at your goals how many enrollments or tour bookings or scholarship applications do you want yep. um and then we've worked it out so um looking at the objectives being realistic with the client about what they want to achieve and just having an honest chat about if it's achievable within that budget um the competition so um you know Showing scholarship ads in peak scholarship season is going to bring more competition. But I will say for most of our clients, um, you know, the seal of programmatic advertising hasn't yet been opened. And so there would be low co direct competition, but you also have to look at seasonal competition like, yep. you know, Christmas and Boxing Day um, and all of those kind of sales, maybe yeah, peak holiday times, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So you just have to bear that in mind. We generally will tell you if you advertise, we'll tell our clients that they're advertising in a peak advertising yeah. season just to let them know that their clicks will be 10 to 20% more expensive yeah. for a little while. Um, and then the, your target audience size. So the more specific, and it's kind, of, it's kind of counterintuitive with digital marketing, but the more specific and narrowed down your audience, uh, the more expensive it is, generally speaking, right? Yeah. Is that yeah. right? what you see? Yeah. yeah. And so um, we'll look at your audience size and what you want to achieve. And we'll often advise our clients, okay, we understand that you really want to meet this person, but let's yeah. try to broaden it up to say, you know, sometimes, you know, a client will come to us and say, we want to, um, you know, expand our kindy. Yeah. And then we'll have the chat, well, do you have places in year one and year two yeah. or prep? Can we make it a lower primary ad instead just yeah. to broaden that audience out of it? Yeah. Um, and then yeah, the geographic scope. So if you're going national, international, obviously you'll need a bigger budget. Mm -hmm. um, and then the frequency and duration. And so we will always try and um, get our clients a higher frequency so that people are seeing your ads more frequently, even if that means that you have to shorten the um, how long the campaign runs for the lifetime of the campaign. And then testing. Um, we will come back to you after two weeks and say this is what we're seeing and this is what you can expect um, for conversions and, you know, are you happy to continue on that path? There are some adjustments we can yeah. make to make it a little bit more cost-effective as you go. But generally, like, as we've seen on all of these platforms, like Google Ads um, is another example, the uh, more consistently you advertise on these platforms yeah. um, and tweak and adjust and refine, yeah. um, the better the results that you're going to see. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, your goals, of course. We'll, we'll talk about the goals that they want to achieve. And, say, you know, if, if someone comes to us and says, you know, they're expecting a 1,000 clients, you know, yeah. next yeah. month, um, and often we'll have small businesses that come to us and yeah. they may be not as um, experienced as our school marketers are um, and, you know, we just have to kind of realign expectations with what they want to achieve. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Great. Great. Were there any questions? No. All right. No. Perfect. Does anyone – yeah, if you have any questions, pop yeah. them in before we move on to the next. Um, I know that was a mouthful. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's, um, I have included in the links at the bottom of this, this video, um, a link to our media buying, um, landing page on our website, just because it will give you an idea yeah. for those 
the two platforms that I think have the most potential for schools mm. is the digital billboards. Yep. Um, so we can get a billboard campaign up and running within a few days. We have the graphic design resources and um, the bidding platforms. We have a few platforms that we use for billboards. And so we can recommend, if you put in an inquiry there, we can actually recommend um, billboards for your local area. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that is it. so the ones that we recommend we're going into bidding for them so it's not to say that you are going to get those billboards yeah. but they'll be on the list for bidding um, and then the connect tv connected tv um, yeah. or yeah live tv um, is also yeah great very cost effective yeah. when you look at the data um, in terms of um yeah the click-through rates and the engagement it's really a great platform that people are underutilizing within yeah. our space I mean I, I know yeah. it's going gangbusters in every other space but within the school space it's maybe Lots a little bit underutilized yeah. yeah thing um great so it also might be nice um, Mara, if we can jump into um mastermind and maybe yes. we can just uh, go through um, some of the details there so mastermind is our weekly support training call that we have um, and I'd love to maybe just ask yeah what kind of questions um, maybe you can go into a little bit and what kind of questions yeah. people can bring to the calls yeah we're really enjoying the mastermind we've found it to be more of an intimate group of school marketers yeah. that come and have a chat every week yeah um Oh, sorry, David Garden. He's asking, what do you mean by connected TV? TV. So yep. digital TV. So streaming, on-demand television, all the locals, televisions like Channel 10, Channel, uh, what is it, um, ABC. Um, um, oh, goodness, <laughs> I'm trying to Hot think of TV local TV. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the local TV channels that people, so what we don't even have connection to, like what is it even called like normal traditional tv in yeah. our house we yeah. don't actually we just stream everything yeah yeah I don't, like yeah probably you the same yeah, like, probably. yeah i am yeah we don't like um you know my kids don't have any concept for having to wait for a show to come on um you know, my husband used to say you know when he was you know when he was a child and he used to get ready for school his favorite cartoon would come out at 7 a.m and he knew yeah. he had to be ready for 7 a.m if he was going to watch it otherwise he missed it yeah <laughs> yeah so we don't have that tool as parents these days. Um, so, yeah, so live, yeah, digital TV, restreaming, yeah. Super tip. Yeah, free to air. Amazing. That's the correct term, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and the, the nice thing about it is that they are localised. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's a misconception. People think TV ads and you have to go nationwide, but they're localised, um, you know, not like hyper-localised, but very, very localised. And so it's a huge branding opportunity for schools. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, so the mastermind. So, yeah, we are catching up on a weekly basis. Um, it's really one of – it's mentoring in the small group. Um, Schools are coming with their questions, um, having a chat about um, marketing issues, where they should spend their funds, how they should spend their funds, diagnosing their advertising, um, talking about how to build rapport with their principals and up their budget planning for next year, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, and I think we've really, I'm quite proud of the value that we've added in that group. Um, I really feel like we've made a difference for a few marketers that have said, wow, I followed your advice. You know, I literally went to meeting this afternoon and I followed your advice and we had a win yeah so um that's my happy zone that makes me feel like I'm connected with my audience and yep. providing value to our schools and so um yeah weekly calls and then we do the monthly training which is this one and a live Q&A after the training yep. where we can deep dive more specifically into the topic okay um and it's 80 dollars a month if yep. i'm not correct you get two week free trials yep. and that'll give you time to join a few calls ask a few questions um and just get a feel for the campaign and you can cancel at any time it's just done via paypal so you have your paypal protection you can cancel on paypal at any time um so yeah that's, and uh sign up where can we go to question sign up? yeah um the sign up is in the description <laughs> right i think it's yeah i'm not gonna i think it's okay. forward slash marketing dash that mentorship sounds, right yep um, okay. But, yeah, so in the description there's a link to the mentorship. We'd love to have a few more mm. and we're going to be inviting a few, um, personally like, inviting a few more people in. Um, and I think, yeah, it's been a really good group.
Great. Um, so, Oakley, Grandma, do you help with developing messaging to optimize campaigns? Yes, that's a huge chunk of the value yeah. that we add to our campaigns. Yeah. Um, and so what we typically do when we across, let's just go broader than just programmatic, yeah. um, is we would um, research, we, we read up on our schools and look at your reviews and what parents are saying and what your website says. Yeah. And then um, we normally develop two copies. Yep. So one is the launch copy and the next one would be a, a backup. Yep. Um, and we also design the creatives. So um, our schools provide us with a suite of images yep. that they would like to use. And we do a briefing call and we go through the images and the angle that we want to take yep. um, in terms of our copy. And once we agree on that, we come back with a just a one-page um, campaign plan yeah. Yeah. Um, that our clients then sign off on and we build out their campaigns for them. Yeah. And so um, with programmatic, um, and we will give you advice on like, so some of the wording will be more keyword focused. I mm. mean, we're trying to hit keywords and some of it will be with a longer form content. We're really trying to hit like motivators, yeah. parent motivators behind the scenes. So, yeah. Great. Are there any other questions? Otherwise, I'll call that a success. Yeah, lovely. And, yeah, did you have anything else you wanted to no, add? No, no, I think that was a good, yeah, good one on programmatic. Great. Yeah. Thank you for joining us and we're looking forward to seeing you next month's training. Okay, bye. bye.